All right, uh, so finally, I'm getting around to building my 14 inch solid. Uh, so this has been a, a project a long time coming. So I've actually uh, stripped all the parts, painted them, uh, primed them, sandblasted, etc. Uh, they've actually been sitting on this bench for probably close to a month now. Uh, I'm only just getting around to uh, actually building them now. So basically this is a 14 inch Model 45 solid top and this particular mower I'm going to create a groomer. So this groomer is going to complement my 17 inch solid cylinder mower uh, and hopefully my turf will benefit from that. So this build, this series I suppose is, is pretty much going to be very similar to my previous series. A uh, couple of changes is really all it is is the reel uh, and the 14 inch groomer or any groomer rather, just won't have a bed knife. Uh, so there's no blade that the, the, the reel actually cuts against. Uh, you'll see that in future videos. So today we're gonna to start with the rear rollers. Uh, so basically that's, I basically start at the rear roller on all my builds. Uh, I find once, once you get the rear roller and the frame together and the front roller on, you've got a, a rolling chassis. Uh, and then I find it much easier to work on the mower uh, when you can push it around. So. That's what we're going to start today. We're going to start the rear roller. Um, so watch along and hopefully you can learn something. Okay, so because this is a, a 14 inch model, uh, the 14 inch model actually has a counterweight uh, installed inside uh, one of the rear roller halves. So uh, it doesn't actually matter which side uh, roller you put it in uh, when you actually put the roller together then it does matter uh, so the counterweight has to be on the non-drive side so basically the opposite side to the chains uh, so that's pretty crucial so the counterweight basically if you're doing a 17 inch model uh, you won't have a counterweight in your roller uh, to my knowledge I think it's only the 14s and the 20 inches I don't actually have a 20 inch so I might be wrong there but uh, 14 inch definitely has a counterweight uh, so first step I'm gonna install the counterweight uh, so basically that's easy you just pop it in the rear roller and there's two bolts to, to hold it in place so nice and simple okay so as you can see uh, rear weights installed in the roller um, might be a bit hard to see on camera uh, that adds considerable weight to that roller uh, so that's the first step complete so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to install the, um, the bits of PVC pipe so we pop them in there and then we're going to pop the end of the roller and then we've got uh, both halves of the roller basically assembled uh, and then from there we'll continue to, to put the shaft through uh, and uh, little wedges and other bolts. So, here we go. Okay, so we've got both rollers together. Uh, basically, we're halfway there. Uh, so this roller has the counterweight, so that's gonna be the non-drive side. Uh, this one does not have the counterweight, so this will be the drive side, so that's the closest to the chains. Uh, next step is installing the shaft. Uh, so this, this actually uh, center cog here, that actually does come off. Or when I do my builds, I actually try not to take that off. Uh, if you slide that off, you'll see there's another uh, wood, woodruff key in there uh, which will stop that rotating and there's also a locking nut here. So, uh, I mean, if you take it off, that's fine, no dramas. Uh, I, I just tend not to. Um, it, also, it also gives me a reference point. Uh, so if I don't take that off, I sort of know 
that that's in the right place. Um, well, it should be in theory, if someone else hasn't played with it. So, I mean, it's pretty simple anyway. This screw here will bolt down onto a, a, a flat milled sort of surface on the shaft. Uh, so you've got the general idea of where it needs to go anyway. So anyway, so next step, uh, we'll put some pores into our shaft here. So one thing to note when doing that, the pores have a, uh, a divot in one side and a flat bit on the other side. So the divot has to go into the, into the, uh, into the holder. So you only see the flat side at the top. That's pretty crucial. Uh, also to note, when I do this, I don't actually add any grease uh, to these. Uh, if you do, what you're gonna find is that just gonna blog up and then your, uh, your pull won't actually work correctly. So your pull's meant to uh, pivot like such. Uh, and then as you pull the mold backwards, this will actually engage into the little knobs here uh, and prevent the roller from going backwards. So uh, that's pretty crucial. Uh, the pull's must be going inwards, so face inwards. So remembering the counterweight is the non-drive side. This is the non-drive side of the of the shaft. This is the drive side. It's the, it's the one where the gear goes. So remember that, that the weight goes on the non-drive side. Okay, so now we've done that, we can put our uh, locking bushes on the end. Uh, basically, what that is, is a, a, a hollow sort of tube and a, a nut. So that nut screws down onto the shaft. You'll see on the shaft that there's a, a, a milled flat section. So just make sure that that bolt goes onto the flat section. Uh, it will actually prevent that from uh, rotating around the shaft. So, one thing to note. Uh, so also, also on the uh, end caps there, so there's a locking nut. Uh, basically, don't forget to do that, do that locking nut up. Uh, that will provide tension onto that bolt and prevent it from coming out. So it's pretty crucial. Right, so we're almost there. So rollers basically together. Uh, next step is going to be the bearing um, bearing holders. So they'll go on each end of the uh, the roller. So one thing to note with that is you'll see that one bearing holder has three three holes. The second one has three holes as well. However, two of the holes are, are sort of ovals. So basically, this is pretty crucial. So this is how you uh, level your rear roller when you install it on your mower. So the the side with three holes, that that side goes on the bearing uh, or the chain side of the roller. So that's pretty crucial. We, we don't want that side to uh, to be able to move basically. So uh, when you install the mower, you've got the two slots on the other side. So if you loosen the two the bolts with the two slots, uh, that will actually be, uh, allow you to to pivot that that side up and down on the fixed bolt. So basically that will uh, raise and lower this side of the rear roller uh, and you, you need to do that to align your rear roller with the, uh, uh, the bed knife. So basically you want your rear roller and bed knife to be exactly level. Uh, that, that allows when you drive your mower, it allows it to uh, cut nice and even. Uh, if it's not level, you'll find that your, your mower actually digs in on one side. Uh, so when you mow, you'll see that one side's cut lower than the other. Uh, that is why, because your rear roller is not aligned properly. So pretty crucial, uh, the side with three holes is the drive side. This side also gets a spring. 
So there's a spring. So basically this spring's just a, a spacer uh, and, it, and there's only one. So there's one spring and that goes on the drive side of the rear roller, like so. Uh, and then your bearings. So I've got two new bearings. Uh, quite simple, you just push them in. I'm gonna use a, a vise to do that. Uh, so basically set it up like so uh, and then squish it in the vise. Uh, and that'll push the bearing in Applies even pressure across the bearing uh, and that bearing should sit nice and flat in there. Uh, and the same on the other side. So this side, no spring, bearing uh, in the vise, squish it together. Uh, excellent. So, and then once we've done that, it's just a matter of pushing the uh, bearing holders on the end of each, uh, each side of the roller. Okay, so I actually forgot to record pressing their bearings in, but you can see that both bearings have been pressed into the bearing holders. Uh, the side with the three holes, that's got the spring at the back there, so it acts as a spacer, uh, also sort of like a, like a spring, I suppose you could say. Uh, so basically all we have to do now is push the bearing houses on the end of the shaft of the roller. So remembering that the slotted one is the non-gear side, this side, and the three holes is the fixed, which is the gear side. So the guide, the side with the uh, chain. So quite simple. Push them on, tap them on with a hammer, or uh, maybe a tube that goes over this. And knock it on. It's a much better option. I I actually tend to uh, do that very last. So I'm I'm not going to push mine on just yet. I do that just before I put it into the frame, um, just in case I need to pull the roller apart again or something. Uh, just because getting these off with the bearing is it, it is quite difficult. Uh, so I like to just just wait until the very last moment before I push them on. So anyway, that's the uh, rear roller complete. Thanks for watching.